He is uh, Rick Neuheisel, CBS College football analyst, and joining us, Continental Tire Coach's Corner. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Danny, how are you? Somewhere, Paul Westhead is wanting to yes. call in. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Paul Westhead paid the price. Yep, paid the yes, price. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, all right. A happy LeBron is the only kind of LeBron that the Lakers want. That is exactly right. But that's the difference in coaching in the NFL, coaching in college, coaching in the NBA, coaching in college. Like, you know, did you ever have a situation where you had to treat a star player differently in college? Uh, not in college. Uh, you know, it, it certainly when I was with the Ravens that there was, you know, Ray Lewis had two lockers, right? When John Harbaugh got to the Ravens, it was the first thing he did. He took away one of Ray's lockers. Ooh. And Ray, and Ray had to deal with that, but Ray, being a, uh, a great teammate, did do it, deal with it. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the pro game, when they get to a certain level, keeping them happy is, is part of the uh, answer for the coach, no question about it. Is Alabama too good? Right now, the answer is affirmative. Yes, they are too good. And, and the question is, is that good for college football? They are... Uh, light years ahead of everybody else. Uh, they are leading the way such to the point that what Nick Saban does uh, resonates through the rest of college football. Take, for instance, Tua Tunga Bailoa and what's happening with their offense. You can see that Ohio State, you know, went to throw in the ball much more such to the point that Haskins threw 73 passes just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you see what Dabo Sweeney did at Clemson. They went to their youngster, who's a really good player, but they realized Kelly Bryant wasn't going to beat Alabama. You know, so he was 16 of 37 a year ago for 124 in the Sugar Bowl. They, they said, we have to do this and catch up. And uh, I think that's also what predicated the move in at Notre Dame with Ian Book. You have to hmm. have a point guard at quarterback. And uh, those are the teams right now that have a shot. But uh, it's, it's going to be just that. It's a shot. You know, it's not something that you're going to go toe-to-toe because Alabama is formidable and then some. Do you look at uh, Tua as a pro prospect? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's got, you know, you're talking about Magic Johnson. He's got that, that charisma. He's, you know, Magic Johnson was a fabulous player in his own right. But what made Ma- him magic was the personality, right? The, the effusiveness. Everybody wants to be around him. Everybody wants to be part of Showtime. That is exactly what Tua has done for that, that offense. Everybody knows the ball can come to them. They all want to be around him. He's the only guy that, you know, throws an interception in his first throw in the second half of the national championship game on a play that no one was even going out for a pass. And he goes over and puts his arm around the little general and says, don't worry about it. You can, you can only imagine when Nick Saban says, I'm going to worry about it. Okay. Tua, I'm going to worry about it. But uh, yeah, he's got that kind of personality. Everybody wants to be around this kid. There's no question. He's a uh, top slot quarterback for the NFL. I was talking about this about 15 minutes ago that Michigan could get boxed out here. If, if Georgia would beat Alabama, Alabama's not dropping out of the top four. Even if Michigan beats Ohio State, can, like, can you sort of see the music game of musical chairs here? Uh, how do you think it yeah. ends up? How do you end up with the, uh, the final four? I, well, I, I think Michigan running the table, especially as they're doing it right with this defensive juggernaut. They're good. I mean, they held, they, they're darn good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they held uh, Penn State to under 200 yards offense. They held Michigan State to under 100 yards of offense after Wax and Wisconsin before that. Uh, you know, if they had, but, but it's interesting, as you said, you mentioned Georgia, because to me, they're a lot the same. If they can get their defenses going and hold the n- pass numbers down for their quarterbacks, somewhere in that 17 to 24 number, then they're going to be really efficient on offense as well. I just did the Georgia-Kentucky game, and Georgia has these two great running backs in Swift and Holyfield who are replacing Chubb and Michelle from a year ago. If they keep in that thing in rhythm, they can give Alabama a test. But it's probably a two-touchdown line in that game just because Alabama is that good. But I don't see Michigan getting boxed out. I, I, okay. I see a Big Ten team getting in, and I think the committee would say if it's Georgia and Alabama in that game, then that's a playoff game. That's what I think would happen. He's Rick Neuheisel, CBS College football analyst, of course, a former coach and a quarterback's coach in the NFL, uh, which leads me to this question. And I've talked about this the last couple of weeks. I don't know if we're going to see these dinosaurs like Brady and Breeze, Rivers, Roethlisberger, Eli, because there are so many great quarterbacks at such a young age 
that I wonder if teams are going to invest $100 million in quarterbacks after five years when you want that rookie contract and build off of that. Do you, do you see this wave of, I mean, there's just so many quarterbacks who are already coming out of high school now, Coach. Well, there are, and uh, there's got to be a place for them, but they're not going to get rid of the Bradys and the Breezes uh, for a couple of more years because, number one, they're taking such good care of themselves, right? Their they're, 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 they're race against father time is absolutely where they're at their competitive best. But once these guys are to... done, though, in the next five years, Eli's done, Ben's right. done, Breeze is done, right. uh, Rogers might be done, Brady's done. It's that next wave, I wonder if, you know, maybe Russell Wilson is a guy who, you know, stays around a long time. I'm, I'm just curious, that next wave of quarterback group, uh, how long you stay with. Like Joe Flacco, to me, is probably, you know, nearing his end right now. Uh, so I don't know what I'd happens. Agree. I'd agree with that. Okay. I'd agree with that. There, there, there are the savants at the position that you just mentioned on the front part of that, of that uh, list that can play for a long time because they have the recipe. You know, Peyton Manning, his body failed him, but he knew where to go with the ball, and, and he'd still be playing if his body would have allowed him. Both Breeze and Brady are taking such great care of their bodies, they can keep doing it because they have this recipe where they know what you're doing before you know what you're doing, and they can put a ball wherever they want to, and that is the most valuable thing of all. So if you've got somebody that can still do that, then they're, you're going to pay them the top freight. But until you prove that you can do that like those those guys, you're going to be looking for younger guys. There's no question about it. Mahomes and them, there's room for and, – and it's great to see that a guy like Mahomes, who played in the air raid offense of college, which was thought to be, you know, just no way would translate to the next level – you're, you're seeing that those guys can play as well. So it's going to be fun to watch as the RPO continues to creep into the NFL. Most important quarterback stat for you in the NFL is what? Yards per attempt. Uh, I, I always, you know, I love a high percentage passer because I know I can trust him when I call a pass. But I want the ball to be, I want you to at least foraging down the field. I don't want you just taking dink and dunks where I'm, you're leaving me behind it. So if that yards per attempt is over eight in the pro ranks and over nine in the collegiate ranks, now I know I got somebody that uh, is eyes are in the right place. They're down the field and then coming back down uh, to a check down. So, uh, but he's looking for that, uh, that stuff down the field. It's going to change the complexion of a game. Explosive plays are the key. I told you, I just did this Kentucky Georgia game. Yeah. Kentucky had no explosives. I mean, I think they had maybe won the entire game. You can't change the field position. You're in harm's way. I also wondered about this, that uh, USC has Notre Dame. They have UCLA. I don't know if there's a scenario where Clay Helton is going to lose his job, but what I was told is there's so much other things going on behind the scenes at USC that aren't football-related. You don't have a school president. Like, there's a lot of things going on that they're not going to change yeah. their coach right now, but – if you get if you lose to UCLA and get embarrassed by Notre Dame, do you see a scenario where USC does make a coaching change? Well, you can't get embarrassed. You know, Clay Helton took the, the uh, play calling back, and they had over 500 yards of offense, and they looked good on defense. Now that was against Oregon State. They're four and three in the conference. They've got two games left: Cal and UCLA. They should win both. If they struggle or lose one or both of those and fall out of the race and then get embarrassed by Notre Dame, then I think something could happen. But uh, barring that, I think Clay Helton gets another year. But he's going to have to recruit more guys that can play up in the front. And that goes for the entire Pac-12. If You can't get defensive linemen that can play on par with these other juggernaut programs out there. You're playing for you're playing for second place because you, you, you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those fellas. And that's why you have Clemson and Alabama. They get those kids. We thought Auburn was going to have that this year. But if you don't have that stout defensive line, it, it just feels like you're not going to beat those two teams. And that's what Ed Ogeron said after the game. You know, uh, Steve Ensminger, his offensive coordinator, has scored zero points against Alabama in true tries. They try to go old school. They try to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and they get punched in the nose and sent home. They, they just can't do it. You have to have those defensive linemen. There aren't enough to go around. 
which is why I think college football has to look at itself and say, we have to open up the playoff and let more teams have a chance. It's not going to change it immediately, but by more teams getting into the playoff, I think the coveted players will see there's more places to go than just these couple of spots to have their chance, not only to play for the big prizes in college football, but also get ready for the NFL. That's you got to get to spread the wealth a little bit. Otherwise it's going to be this way for, for some time. Always good to catch up with you. You make me smarter. Thank you, Rick. Who's better than you, boys? Take care now. <laughs> That's Rick Neuheisel, CBS College Football Analyst. Mr. Energy there. Continental Tire Coach's Corner. Uh, Continental Tire is proud to be the exclusive tire of the Dan Patrick Show. No matter where you drive or what you drive, Continental designs tires for what you do. For more information, visit ContinentalTire.com. Continental Tire for what you do. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.